Hey, hi, and hello, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. And it's time for a weekly track roundup where I give my thoughts on a bunch of songs that have dropped over the past week or so, whether I loved them or hated them. They're talked about in this video and they are listed down below so you can check them all out for yourself. Also listed down below is, of course, our Turntable Lab link. We get kickback from it supports the channel if you uh, want to buy some vinyl or uh, some other turntable related items over there that would be great our patreon page is listed down below as well access to our discord community uh, replays of our new music friday streams and other random streams that i do from time to time uh be cool extra patreon only let's argues classic album live streams lots of cool stuff going over there on the uh, patreon page check it out check it out check it out. And uh, also we have our YouTube shorts channel that is growing week to week. And uh, finally, shout out to our continued sponsor, the good people over at the Ridge, still making these amazing, fantastic, lovable, huggable, mwah, kissable, mm, biteable, minimalist metal plated wallets that fit nicely in that front pocket link down below promo code melon. All you got to know. And then finally, uh, we have a shout out handed to us by Austin. Uh, she says that this is a Graham Lambkin album, Limp Test Sound Collagist. Graham Lambkin has a new double album called Aphorisms. It's going to be out in June. It has a track titled Needle Muff on it, which is disappointingly not a diss track on us. Okay, so it's not a needle drop diss track. or It, it might be. It could be, I suppose. Um, the album is pretty fucking suspenseful. The single is easy on the jump scares, though. Although, check out uh, Salmon Run if you haven't heard it and uh, have a nice weekend while you're at it. That's what Austin says uh, with this recommendation uh, of the Graham Lambkin. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's move on to the worst tracks of the week. We have a handful of those. They are as follows. Uh, we have a new one from the Jonas Brothers. This new track from them, a Waffle House, is some really bad 80s pop revivalism just done in the tackiest and most unlikable way possible. Uh, even though 80s pop and synth pop is you know, generally a pretty great you know, era and genre, uh, the Jonas Brothers do not bring the best out of it, I would say. Uh, we have this new one from uh, Lil Tyler who has a new cut uh, out featuring Lil Uzi Vert. The song is so awful, I didn't even really stick around for the Uzi Vert feature. I'll say this, Tyler is not going to win um, you know, any kind of like number one charismatic guy on the mic contests anytime soon. We can leave it there. Uh, we have a new one from Albert Hammond Jr., you know, who I do enjoy a track from time to time. However, this is really, truly not one of them. Not only is it, uh, I think, very weak songwriting from Albert on his part, but the Goldling feature on the back end of the song is uh, really awkwardly performed, and I just think not really all that good of a fit. Uh, we have also one from Drake. Uh, we talked about this track over on the Fantano channel recently. Um, I'm not going to belabor any points about this or kind of go at length in the way that I did in the full-length review. Uh, I'll just be brief here and say this is lame. This is one of Drake's lamest singles ever, and while I understand uh, maybe he's back in Drake mode with this song, with him being uh, very sad and desperate and so on and so forth, I feel like he's kind of digging down to some supreme depths uh, with that to the point where he's almost just like a parody of himself on this one. That's kind of how I'm feeling with it, so... There you go. Uh, Search and Rescue is the title of the cut, if I didn't already say it. Uh, and we have one also from Noah Cyrus over here who's kind of, you know, uh, teaming up with Vance Joy and doing a bit of a, you know, a moody, uh, somewhat rustic singer-songwriter thing. And it's not going over well. Moving on from there, we have the tracks that are meh. The ones I was not crazy about, but still uh, thought they were worth shouting out. You might like them more than me. Uh, we have a new one over here from Young Boy Never Broke Again with Nicki Minaj. Uh, the Nicki feature is uh, pretty decent. The beat's not too bad. Young Boy's wild vocalizations are here in full force. Um, but I, I guess I just think uh, he's not one of the you know best out there these days. Uh, I think he's uh, pretty one-dimensional as far as like you know expectations and performance goes. I don't really think he has much of an Year for production either. Um, I, I just think it's kind of average for him. It just has a Nicki Minaj feature uh, on top of what you would usually hear on a young boy uh, single. Uh, we can move on from there to this new Lil Yachty track. I guess kind of like a bit of an extra or an afterthought from, you know, this uh, kind of psych 
some of psych experimental era that he's in the midst of with the release of his latest project. And um, I suppose it's, it's it's not a bad extra. Strike is the name of the track holster. I just wish it had more, I guess, like a variation across its verses and choruses. It's just a little one dimensional. Uh, the vibe is, is respectable, though. Uh, moving on from there, we have a new one from uh, Temps, the James A. Caster uh, project that, um, you know, he's been kind of spearheading uh, for a little bit with a variety of different artists. It's almost like, you know, gorillas esque in the way that it's uh, so collective and collaborative. Uh, this track over here features many voices, uh, some of whom are Yoni Wolf of Y fame, also Quelly Chris in the mix too. Shamir is on the track as well and, and more. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not bad. I think it's a little messy. It's a little sloppy in terms of how it's kind of pulling its many voices and ideas together. Uh, but still, I think it's a, it's an admirable attempt over here. The uh, song is titled, If I Could Jest. Uh, check it out. Uh, we have a new one over here from Tizo Touchdown, which is a pretty admirable lo-fi little pop rock cut. Uh, I don't know if the tune is the biggest smash he's ever done, but um, it definitely has a you know a pretty straightforward song structure and, and uh, I, I suppose uh, uh, some expressive lead vocals. We could say that. Uh, moving on from there, we have a new one from Poppy, which I was really excited to hear uh, from because I, I know that she's kind of gearing up for something new really soon. Church Outfit is the name of the cut. It does have some wild vocals, some industrial undertones too, but um, a little underdeveloped, a little short, honestly. Uh, I, I would love to hear Poppy kind of go at length with this track or just some sounds similar to what she's delivering here, I guess I could say. Uh, we have a new one from... Um, Dinner Party, which features Kamasi Washington, among many others. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have a bit of Neo Soul on this track over here. It's kind of floating around our first taste of an upcoming project that they have on the way. For Granted is the name of the song. It's featuring Aaron Ray. Some of the piano samples and I think the vocal performance are okay, but I do like the... Uh you know, I guess stylistic uh, crossroads of sounds and influences, including jazz and soul and R and B, that uh, typically inhabits dinner parties tracks. Digging, uh, you know, the vibe generally, even though I, I don't think the song is the strongest. Uh, we have a new one also from Joiner Lucas, a uh, future in the mix on this one, and I think he kind of carries it. Honestly, Blackout is the title of the track. I mean, Joiner on the front end of the song is tolerable enough. Uh, Future's performance is great. I think one of his better features in a while. And the beat is really his kind of instrumental, which is why I think he just flows on it so well. This might as well be a future track, in my opinion. It's, it's a future track, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not too bad. <clears throat> All right, we have a new one from Dorian Electra. Uh, Freak Mode is the title of the track. And surprisingly, I was not really uh, freaked out. I suppose in a way it's a bit of a letdown for a new Dorian song and potentially a new Dorian era, uh, because the last two records have been so solid and interesting and genre pushing and out there and wild. And Freak Mode, I think, uh, despite its title, is a bit of a mild one for Dorian, frankly. I mean, the metal guitars are cool, and uh, some of the vocal melodies definitely stand out, but aesthetically, it just kind of feels like a little bit of mindless self-indulgence worship. No more, no less. Yeah, I just feel like there are contemporaries out there these days making freakier music. And uh, I, I think Dorian even fails in a sense to live up to the freakiness of their obvious reference points on this track. I don't know. You know, it, it's, it's not bad though. It's not bad, but not really blowing my mind like so many previous Dorian tracks have, frankly. We have a new one from Conway the Machine, which, um, you know, not super heavy on the dark, gritty vibes, honestly. This one feels almost a little a little lighthearted, at least on the instrumental front. Bars are fine. Uh, quarters is the name of the cut. I, I wouldn't say it's one of his strongest, but, you know, I, I suppose he uh, does have a cycle coming on the way. Uh, also, we have um, BLP Kosher and Babytron with Mazeltron. Instrumental's okay. I mean, flows are all right, but there are some very funny and clever bars uh, throughout the track overall. I mean, and, you know, not the most memorable cut I think Baby Tron has ever been on, but uh, it, it is a, a, a notable collab. We can say that. All right. Uh, we have a new one from Beach Fossils. I mean, of course, it's very dreamy. It's very, you know, uh, lo-fi, early 2010s, reverbed out, stark, skeletal indie rock. It's uh, uh, not too bad. It's chill. 
It's laid back. It's just, just like a classic Beach Fossils song uh, typically is, though it, it feels like they've trended away from the monochrome post-punk vibes of their 2013 record Clash the Truth, which uh, kind of crazy that that album is uh, 10 years old at this point. But, uh, you know, there you go. Moving on from there, we have a new one from Ash Nico, uh, whose vocals and production are so wild and out there and abrasive. I would say the song um, is kind of obnoxious. However, it's uh, so loud and in your face and... <laughs> unashamed of what it is. I kind of admire it a little bit anyway. I, I'm sort of on the, the, the fence with it in that sense, I suppose. Uh, the name of the track is Weed Killer, and it's a, it's a bit of a banger. It's, it's a very um, you know it, tough pill to swallow as far as bangers go, but it's a banger. Uh, let's move on to the best tracks of the week, the ones that really grabbed my attention. Uh, they are as follows. Bam! We have a, a new little extra from the legendary synth punk outfit, Suicide. Side. I mean, you know, obviously, uh, rest in peace, Alan Vega, the duo has been defunct for years and years and years. Now we're not talking about, you know, a new track or anything like that. We're talking about a, a recently um, unearthed or released cover of Bruce Springsteen's <laughs> Born in the USA, uh, where they can be heard pretty much like taking the piss out of the song. It's a, a hilarious, it's a hilarious and very irreverent and entertaining cover. Um, and, uh, I, I got a lot, I got a lot out of it. I'll, I'll say that, uh, as, as someone who's really messed with suicide music for quite a while. Uh, we have also one over here from a uh, shy girl, a couple of bangers, or at least, you know, like a two part track playboy and positions. It's dark, it's sexy, it's strange. I kind of missed this vibe or was hoping for more vibes like this off of shy girls, uh, recently released record. I'm, I'm glad to hear it kind of come back in spades on these new cuts, uh, for sure. For sure. Uh, we have a new one over over here from Red Veil and JPEG Mafia teaming up on this cut Black Enough with a wild ass instrumental. Some great trades between the both of them. Just a lot of uh, uh, aggressive in your face Afrocentrism. Makes sense to me. Kicks ass. It rules. 11 it, 11 it. Uh, we have also following this. A new one from Youth Lagoon, uh, whose new singles have been pretty intriguing. This one, Prize Fighter, I think is a very nice, spacey, uh, dreamy piece of art pop with a uh, uh, really awesome lead vocal performance. I'm liking it a lot. It's uh, uh, mystical. It's pretty. It's a little wondrous as well. Uh, but, you know, kind of striking a much different tone because I was never a big fan of like the early Youth Lagoon stuff. This kind of feels like something uh, very new. I'm surprised it's technically being considered the same project because it does feel very very, very new in a way. Uh, liking the first taste we have gotten of Catramine, where it's uh, Amine and um, Catranata teaming up. They're going to have an album on the way. Uh, the song Forever is very groovy, features Pharrell Williams, and uh, has some very in-your-face you know, uh, sexual bars and, and rhymes here and there as well. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun one. It's a fun one. We'll say that. All right, uh, moving on from there, Joey Badass has a, a, a romantic, smooth, little slow jam over here with Fallen that I'm uh, liking the vocals and lyrical focus on, and the uh, instrumental is good, too. Uh, liking this one a lot from Joey, showing a lot of uh, versatility uh, with this uh, cut over here. Liking this new one from Indigo to Souza. It is a heart-wrenching little indie rock cut with a great vocal performance, strong chorus as well. Uh, mean to Me is the name of the cut. It's my favorite single from this album album cycle of hers thus far. Uh, we also have a new one from George Clanton, who is just soaking wet in nostalgic 90s vibes on this cut, I've Been Young. It's a lot of very meditative beats. It's just a washed out mix. It's just waves and waves and waves of sound and disembodied vocals. It's blissful. It's fun. It's entertaining. Uh, we have a groovy little number over here from Little Dragon. I think this is actually one of their better singles in a long, long time. The drums and bass lines go, and I think kind of the stillness, the skeletal, uh, you know, instrumentation and kind of the stark vibes uh, going on just sonically kind of make uh, uh, the song feel a bit odd in uh, a cool way. It's almost a little Devo in a sense. I'll say that. And I'm, I'm really kind of messing with that. Uh, we have a new one from uh, Chat Pile who have a brand new single out that uh, I highly recommend. Chat Pile continuing to uh, kick ass in that, uh, you know, sort of like noise rock and sludge metal realm. Uh, the name of this track over here is Cut. And uh, finally, I want to shout out Chai. We the Female is the name of their new song over here. And uh, obviously, it's a, a song with a message, but 
also has some great uh, hype disco grooves and really hype group of vocal passages. Uh, yeah, I think this is one of their stronger singles as well. So, uh, so yeah. Hell yeah, Chai. Um, that has been the Weekly Track Roundup, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you got some good recommendations out of this video. You're the best. You're the best. You're the best. I love you. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Anthony Fantano, Tracks, Weekly, Forever.